Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into First Take. It is so good to be back. I'm Molly Karam. Had a little a little vacay, um, but I definitely miss being here. Stephen A., not back quite yet, gets a little more vacation. And since I have been on, guys, we've announced Max Kellerman, the new host. So I want to yep. congratulate him. I'm so excited for this new era. But meanwhile, we're in very good hands today. And I'm excited I'm here for you, too. Freddie Coleman of The Freddie Coleman Show. Bomani Jones of The Right Time with Bomani Jones. <laughs> you you guys say that the promo, The Right, right? Time. The Right Time. Bomani hey, Jones. You, you actually doubled it though highly questionable as well with our guy Dan and Poppy and you will be filling in for him today yes so so if his show's bad blame me yeah, <laughs> he had happening. nothing to do with it I take responsibility yeah, I will for that. Blame you. Yeah, yeah I know you I, will. I will do that <laughs> I love this radio takeover though thank you guys so much for being here I'll we're gonna you. we're gonna have a good show today I'm very very confident so let's get into it there was a great show last night on the ESPYs and obviously it opened up with superstars pushing for change and I applaud them for that that would be CP3 LeBron D Wade and Mello take a listen First of all, I want to thank all of them for their call to action, and they have gone back to their communities. We applaud them for that. Obviously, a lot of angst and unrest in our country right now, rightfully so. What was your reaction to those guys' speech? It was pretty cool the way they opened up the ESPYs that way, but maybe it's just the way that I grew up and how I was raised. My dad always told me, okay, that's all well and good, but what's the answer to what now? Because it was cool seeing those four men up there opening the ESPYs that way, but now, okay, where do we go from here? Because there are no easy answers when it comes to whatever is dividing this country racially, whether sports can be that unifier, whatever that is. So the fact that those four men, Carmelo, CP3, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James, went up there and they were eloquent, they were passionate, they put, they put a lot of emphasis behind those words. So, yeah, we always hear people say, why can't athletes make more of a difference? Why can't there be more Jim Browns, more Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, people like that? And so these four men in this generation decided to take it upon themselves to do something like that in a very public form, the ESPYs. They knew they were going to get so many eyeballs that were going to watch and listen to what they had to say. But I also live on planet Earth. And I know that whatever they said is one thing, but what people bring to what they said could be a totally different thing. If you're somebody that is racist or not racist, what they said last night is not going to change your frame of reference. So while that was really cool, it was a great moment, it got the ESPYs kicked off to a wonderful, wonderful, got it off to a wonderful start. I still want to know what now, because I still wonder, even with those four big names up there, what kind of impact really is that going to have beyond what happened last night at the ESPYs? Yeah, but let's start with what actually happened there, because I think the most important thing that happened was Dwayne Wade saying, talking about the devaluation of black and brown bodies. And that's a pretty bold statement in the form that they were in to say that, because that's the root of a lot of what we're talking about here. In fact, you could argue that it's the root of most of what we're talking about here. So I hear you. The what now question is always going to come up. It's going to be there. If we're going to put the what now question out there, though, that's not really for them to answer. Right. right? I mean, I, I don't think as wonderful as they are to watch on the court necessarily, I don't feel like it's their job to have the answer on what to do. Now, when they're saying I would like to see athletes explore these issues, become more informed and then speak up more, that I think is important. Like, I'm not one of those people who says I want to hear athletes speak up more. Not all of them. Right. <laughs> right. Like there's some people that you might want to talk to. But I, this idea that we just want to hear from everybody, it isn't there. Here's what the question I would ask, though. A call to action to the athletes is cool because the athletes are the most visible. But in terms of the grand power scheme and who could actually make things change, the people that cut their checks, what are you going to do to resolve this? Because this idea that black people are supposed to fix the race relations problem in America is absolutely ridiculous because I don't think anybody can make the argument that black people started it. So ask the athletes what they could do to bring more attention to these issues, certainly. But you got to ask your bosses what attention they're going to give to these issues, too, because people listen to them a lot more than they listen to any of those dudes that were on that stage. Well, I think the bosses, to your point, Bamani, I think their bosses are glad that they don't have to do that because their bosses are not black men. Their bosses, the guys that cut their checks, are going to be white men. So the fact that they can have somebody else do that where they don't feel they have to do it, don't have, feel they have to speak out on it, to your point, you're exactly correct. When are we going to hear that? And the, I think the answer is we're probably never going to hear it unless it affects them and affects their bottom line. Let's call it as it is. We can say about Black Lives Matter, and people can take that so many different ways. So many people think, okay, this is an affront that all lives don't matter. That's not what the Black Lives Matter movement is all about. It's about, yeah, we know all lives matter, but there's been a systematic disproportionate thing that's happened to black people in so many different situations that affect housing, that affect the black lives. They're not saying that nobody else's lives matter, but there's so many people that take it a different way. 
I think a lot of people that I think many people that own NFL teams and NBA teams, they look at the Black Lives Matter movement and say, OK, this is not my issue unless it affects my bottom line. Anytime we've seen something that affects somebody's money, that affects somebody's profit margin, then people get up in arms and then they want to speak loud and they want to say so many different things. So to your point, you're right. I'm wondering if somebody's going to say anything, but I've seen so many times where no, nothing has been said by those owners cutting the checks that I don't expect them to do anything about this or say anything right, about right, this. Right, right. But even if you don't expect it, we can't get to this place where we ignore the fact that there's a collective responsibility for things to change and that not all the pressure falls onto the athletes in this scenario. So, yeah, I mean, I disagree with you on this, though. The idea that this only matters to owners if it's about the profit margin, no, man. People have backgrounds and their views and everything else. And these people who get irate about things like the Black Lives Matter movement, some of them have very important jobs. And some of them are the people that you would say are only concerned about the bottom line. So I think what they did last night was great. And it was surprising, right? And it was not as equivocal as one might have expected something like that being. Because when you have... People try to find ways to talk about race in public places that doesn't make anybody uncomfortable. It's impossible to do anything Absolutely. that works that way, right? Sure. Like, it, there's, not, there's some people that are just not going to come out of a conversation about race feeling good about themselves if they're going to internalize what's happened in history as to being something personal, right? There's no way around that. But we can't just limit this to, wow, it's a good job. We got these black folks, they get on TV, and they say they want to see some change. We've been wanting to see change for a very long time. There's a need for some help on change. So I would be curious not just to hear from them, but what would Tom Brady feel about this? What would Peyton Manning feel about this? What would those guys, because those are the people that if they said something like that, I bet you'd see more people responsive towards something like change. That's what I'm curious about. This can't just be exclusively the responsibility of four really good basketball players. Well, that's fair, and I'm not going to disagree with that because I can't disagree with that. You're exactly right. If you're going to have the biggest black sports stars in the country, but the biggest white sports stars in the country, a lot of them were in that audience. And it was nice that they probably did a polite applause. I'm not saying they didn't agree with what was said, but we're going, you have to have that conversation. And so many people don't want to be uncomfortable. They want things the way that they used to seeing them, the way they used to experiencing those things. And when you bring race, politics, or religion, things get really muddy. And a lot of people don't want to get into those muddy waters, but we're not going to get anywhere if you can't, if you're afraid to have those kind of conversations, we're not saying that anybody is better or worse than anybody else, but you have to be able to understand those differences. For example, we all have our biases about people. Growing up in people Brooklyn. People fear what they don't know. Right, exactly. And growing up in Brooklyn, New York, if we saw a white guy come in our neighborhood to play basketball, we, we thought two things. Either this cat is really good or this cat is lost because that was the bias that we had in our head. Yeah. But we wound up having a conversation when Larry Bird came around. We said, okay, not all white guys are the same because we want everybody to say all black guys are the same, all black people are the same, all Hispanic people are the same, all women in sports are the same. So if people are afraid to have those kind of conversations or afraid to broach that subject, then we're just going to go around in circles and circles where we get what we got last night. We applaud. That was great. But then we're still in the same boat years later because nothing seemed to get done because it wasn't talked about. Yeah, but we have to get direct to what the issue is, right? Like the issue that we're talking about, the issue of race in America is the issue of a mistreatment of particular sets of people. Like that's where this comes. It becomes difficult to do this because we have to kind of try to bring everybody in. Like I was, when I heard Dwayne Wade mention like the violence in Chicago, it made me wince a little bit because people throw Chicago out. A, like Chicago is the only place people are dying. And B, it's very rarely brought up by people who are actually concerned about Chicago. I imagine Dwayne Wade being from there is concerned, but that seemed almost like a way to say, hey, you know, we're saying this other thing too. You know, you don't have to be afraid of what the message is that we're giving here. We have a real problem with the way that particular groups of people are treated. And if we start there, I bet all the other stuff fixes itself. The thing we can't ignore, though, is there's a whole lot of people that like things the way they are. Absolutely. Right? Like, yeah, I'm like, not disagreeing with you. You know, like, it's not as though everybody is just perfectly oblivious to what the situation is. Some people like things the way that they are. I don't know how you change that if the people who can do things to change things like the way they are. And that's why I said it's a big point to me that you're going to bring what you want mm -hmm. to situations like this. If you bring something that it's not going to change, you can have the best person in the history of the world. He can bring everything to you that's 100% correct. But if you feel a certain way, you're not going to want to go there. You'd rather have it become somebody else's problem. And until we realize differences and understand those differences and have conversation about that, Bamani, you're right. 
so many people, hey, we want things back in the 1950s. We had the white picket fence. Fonzie and Potsy were hanging out on the corner with, you know, at Arnold's. Yeah. A lot of people want that to be their America. They have to realize that that is just miles and miles away. And you can't just continue to throw that at people and think that's the way America no, was we're great. A melting pot. We, we, we've always been a melting pot. This country is founded by immigrants. Mm -hmm. When people come, when people say all the time, Bamani will tell you this, oh, go back to your country. I am in my country. But I can say the same thing about you because you're a descendant of immigrants as well, unless you're Native American. So as long as people have that ideology and have that Stonewall ideology, everything sounds nice, but we're never going to be able to find whatever solutions to problems if people are afraid or don't want to have those conversations. Right. But I will say, all that being said, I do not want to give the impression that we're taking away from what happened yesterday. Well, like, I mean, know. like, it's a step. Like, like, I really, it, I don't even look at it so much as a step as much as for those guys in the positions that they're in with the kind of money that they make. That was not an insignificant thing that they did, right? And there will be some backlash to that that some of them happened to receive there for was doing Twitter that. There was last yeah. night. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that wasn't small. Like, I think we do. I, at first, I was reluctant to give so much credit to this because, I, like, people say things so many times. I didn't, have, I didn't so much agree with what Carmelo had put on Instagram and all of that stuff. But what happened last night was something that I thought was actually legitimately strong. And I think it said a lot about those guys and their willingness to do that. So as much as we can say what now, we can talk about how difficult the problem is going to be. We cannot ignore the fact that it's been a while since you've had people of that magnitude in a situation like that to say the things that they said. And, I mean, to approach this network and be like, look, here's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, <laughs> and look who, there's look something who, there. Look who they referenced, because a lot of times people will shy away from certain subjects because it can affect your marketability and your dollars. But they referenced Kareem and, and Muhammad Ali, and they weren't concerned about that. Social change was more paramount, and we know all that they suffered, right, in, in speaking up based on their cause. So for them, I think to reference those two in terms of we're really going to step up was powerful. Yeah, but let's be clear, though. They referenced Kareem and they referenced, those, and, and they referenced Ali. Being those dudes is two completely different yeah. things. I get right, it, right, but right. at least they're aware yeah. of what made them different right. in that, and they're saying that that's what made them so special, why they are the go, and we need to do more. We need to step up yeah. as a call to action. Right, but how many, like, are you willing to do some of the things that those dudes did? Because if they're not willing to do it, I don't judge them because there was great cost that came with it. But when you're saying, you know, those guys did those things, understand there's a real cost there. And if you're going to be the person to say, let's be more like Kareem, let's be more like Ali, let's be more like Jim Brown, then at some point people are going to look at you and say, why aren't you being more like Jim Brown and so forth and so on? And those dudes do work, so I don't want to pretend as though they don't do anything. But you got to be willing to pay some serious costs to be those dudes. And they're in a position where... Their marketability was not going to be hurt by what happened last night. And to use the Muhammad Ali example, three years of his prime boxing career, he took that away because he was willing to stand up for what he believed in. He was willing to say, I'm not going over to fight a Viet Cong because the Viet Cong never called me the N-word. He was willing to do that and stand up for his beliefs. And that's not to say that they won't do that, but they're in a far better position financially and from a market, marketability standpoint because of what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Muhammad Ali, Jesse Owens, and people did like that. They had, Muhammad Ali had no choice. No one was knocking down his door with endorsement deals that he had to worry about. So I give credit to them that, okay, we could be doing a lot of risk, but I don't think the risk is as much for them, no, what happened last they're night. They're recognizing they're the real heroes right. and that, separating themselves from that in terms of well, what those then, gentlemen right. sacrificed. Then that was good. Really a different it, time. Yeah, I, I understand that. But at the same time, it's a different day and age because there's so much out there that has been provided for them because of the steps that Muhammad Ali and guys like that made. Yep. So we will leave it.